Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, uh, RP0, the realism, <laughs> set of mods for the realism overhaul setup of Kerbal Space Program. Uh, welcome back. Last time you watched me really pork up a Venus transfer, and today we are going to try again. I have repurposed that will always be interesting. Oh, crap. KR-1 launcher. I have just uh, swapped out what was on top for a Ranger Mark II. Last time we launched the Mark I. Um, Mark II sees many, many, many improvements, up to which I will show off to you after we get uh, closer to being in orbit. Since this is another night launch, we have already seen one of these launch during the daytime. I'm just going to skip past this whole launch stage, and I will see you guys as we are rounding up our uh, orbital markers. Hang with me just a second. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Halfway through it, well, really most of the way through it, we have an engine failure. Uh, we really had about 15 seconds of burn time left on that stage. I'm sorry to cut back in during, uh, still a night launch, but, um... Showing that necessitated it. And that is going to seriously hurt our Delta V. So now I need to burn off axis a bit to counter our encroaching time to apogee. And hope that this one doesn't end up just like our last one. Now as soon as it's daylight I'll show you some of the changes that I've made to this. Actually I need to run a science check. 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 Check, check, all right, that's good, all right, time to apogee is now rising, but we may end up clearing most of this stage just to hit orbit, and even though our lander is easily one-eighth the size of what we just sent to the moon, we may be trying to depart Earth's sphere of influence with a lot less delta V on tap, even though I'm pretty sure just our AJ-10 stage could handle the most of the lifting, considering the payload is absolutely tiny. Again, pay attention. It's so hard to talk and fly at the same time. I really... I want to know what Nathan Kell and Scott Manley and Tyler Riz are all doing to make it seem so easy to do all of these things at the same time. I just don't think I can do it. Anyway, that was, uh, that was the interrupt to uh, talk about what was going wrong with this mission already. I'm going to round out this orbit and let it hit some daylight, and I will pick you guys up on the other side. All right, and we did manage to make orbit, and we have a node plotted that puts us on an intercept with Venus. We are just waiting for daylight and these 22 minutes or so to burn off so that we can start our burn. No connection. Of course not. Why would we have a connection? Alright, let's get oriented here. And try to... Well, yeah, okay. Alright, burn is right over Australia, so we should be picking up connection very soon. There it is. We're going to start a little early just to see if we can ullage these engines. And once this is going, we'll start talking about the cool thing. Oh, come on. Don't stay... Yep, there we go. Risky, very stable. Ignition. All right, and we're going to burn through pretty much all of this, so I'm just going to lean on the pedal, and we'll talk about our Ranger Mark II. There he is. Isn't he just adorable? Yeah, another early probe core, because that's the best core we've got currently. A hydrazine tank, four thrusters instead of two, a big antenna, and all four solar panels that can be pointed at the sun at the same time, which is undoubtedly going to give us a huge benefit as far as our charge rate. All of these others on the AJ-10 stage will be also assisting with that, because uh, we're going to need them to, to keep the stage below it alive. Whoa, okay, 
let's turn on stability control. That might help. Uh, I am not going to sit around and burn off all of this hydrazine. These tanks are going to be empty very soon, and considering our wait to burn time, it's uh, it's not really worth it to get that four or five meters per second that those would entail. So as soon as those engines cut out, we are staging and proceeding on our way. But, um, yeah, so hopefully this little guy will actually be able to do his flyby. He's got uh, about 300 meters per second on board, and since the payload is so light, we've got 3,600 meters per second out of that AJ-10 stage, which is massive. More than enough. All right, let's get into staging mode. Stage. Ignition. And we're off. I am probably... Alright, I need to turn these thrusters back on. Nope, that was off. Nope. Still off, I know. Let's unlock the hydro scene. Now the thrusters are on. Okay, now we're moving. We're going to use 2200 of it to hit our target. And then, off-camera, hopefully, I will be setting up a whole lot of things in Flight Computer for this, because I'm pretty sure it's going to run out of contact range the second it leaves our sphere of influence. The range on this dish, it turns out, is about 75 million miles, which won't even carry it past the moon, making it a useless addition to this probe. So, everything that this little guy has to do outside of our sphere of influence needs to be automated through Flight Computer. It's going to be a long and arduous process, that I am not going to make you sit through because, wow, it's just plain terrible. But uh, I do appreciate y'all sitting through this burn with me and hopefully seeing it go a whole hell of a lot better than the last time I tried to do this on an outdated launch platform that was just kind of terrible. But I think through... I think I've got enough figured out about Flight Computer. I've worked with it quite a bit before, just uh, not while trying to do things that were so exact. Basically, the flight plan is to get it on a close flyby encounter with Venus, have it collect some science, make a correction burn that will hopefully put it back on a course with Earth so that it can come back, reinitiate contact, and then transmit back all of its science. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the whole whole shebang. I will be making a fine-tuning maneuver uh, as soon as this burn has completed, probably several minutes after, just to get as close to Venus as possible and just kind of hope that all the math has, uh, that MechJib did. MechJib did all the heavy lifting on plotting this node. You can obviously see that I am absolutely horrendous at plotting nodes. I'm just, just plain bad, really. I'm trying, I swear, I will get better. But, you know, that's, uh, them's the brakes? That's part of, uh, learning the game, I suppose. Oh, yeah, we're way off axis. And I meant to delete these four solar panels and just forgot, because we're going to face this side towards the sun, which leaves all four of those completely useless at any given time. So, we're gonna warp through a bit of this. Hope it just all stays on course. I guess hitting other planets is one thing MechJev is astoundingly useful for. Docking not so much, but it's a great way to teach yourself how to dock. Because it kind of shows you the step-by-step -step in the process involved there. Alright. We are officially going to leave the Sphere of Influence, which is certainly a first. That node is trying to walk away from us. We're coming up on shutdown. Oh. 1.6 meters per second off. Not too bad. It's still lots and lots of fuel left. Alright, let's angle ourselves into the sun. Wrong way. We basically just want to face straight up and see if we can't recover some of this charge. Mm, 
Yeah, no, not off axis. Okay, we're still way off axis, I suppose. Down to 0 0.16. 0 0.15. Oh, that's not good. All right. But what we can do is deactivate this because it serves no real purpose. That takes us down to point one. And when we go into time warp, all the avionics shut down, we are charging at point one nine. Perfect. And let's just double check. Yes, we have an encounter with Venus. 175 million kilometer apogee, but hey, that's not terrible. I am going to fine tune that a bit and start setting everything up, but I will do that all off camera because it's boring and you don't want to sit through it. So thanks for hanging out, everybody. I really appreciate it. I will see you next time.